Welcome back to part two. If you watched part one, you'll know we were finished off after running our first build system, and this time we will be expanding on that and teaching you about other options that you can add to your build systems and variables. <laughs> If you remember, uh, our ls command that we ran before just uh, listed the contents of the user packages directory. This was because by default the build command's working directory is the directory that the build file is saved in. In this episode we're going to see how we can change this from the default as well as take a look at some of the other features that build systems give us. So we'll go back to our little build system file and make one quick edit. All we're going to do right now is add a working directory option in here, which for right now, we'll simply set to the root of my C drive for simplicity's sake and save the file. If we run it again, we can see that the results show the contents of my C drive instead of my user packages directory. Great. As you can see, by adding options to our build, we can gain greater control over how our commands are run. And I highly recommend you check out the documentation to see what all the possible options are because I'm not going to be going over all of them in this video. The documentation is linked below the video in the description. But we can do more than just set some options. What if we don't want the working directory to be hard coded, but instead be based off of what I'm working on? Well, for that sort of thing, we need variables. To demonstrate variables, we're actually going to abandon this LS build system, and instead we're going to create a new one that is actually somewhat useful. We're going to create a build system that will execute JavaScript files using Node.js. Of course, I'm assuming that you already have Node.js installed, otherwise this won't work. For this build system, we'll set the command as Node. But that will just run the Node REPL since we haven't given Node a script to run. Actually, let's see what that looks like since we're talking about it. We'll save this as Node.SublimeBuild, and then we'll select Node as our active build system and run it. you'll notice that the results panel shows up, but we're not seeing any output. That's because we're in the REPL, which doesn't actually have any output to start with, and it's waiting for our input. Sadly, in this panel, we can't give it any input, nor can we hit Control c to kill the process. So, how are we going to stop it? We do that with Tools, Cancel Build. There, now it says it was cancelled, which means the process is no longer running. Now we'll give node a file to run, which we'll do by using the file variable and putting it in the shell command. This variable refers to the full file path, including file name, of the file that is in focus in Sublime. Since we're using the reference to the file directly, we don't need to set a working directory or anything like that. So this is good. Now let's save it. If we try to run the build now, we'll get an error because we have a non-JavaScript file open. If we closed all of the files so that there was no active file, we'd end up running the REPL again because the file variable would be empty. So let's open up a JavaScript file we can run. I have one right here with an extremely simple bit of JavaScript in it, so let's open that up. Now let's run the build, Now we don't actually need to select the build system again because we still it's still selected. Now we get an error. What happened? Well, if you look up here. It's saying that a module is missing. That's, that usually means that Node is trying to load a file and can't find it. In this case, we're only trying to load the one file that we specified. So we're not missing any dependencies or anything. Now look at the path it's looking for. It's a little odd. That's the correct start to our path, but it's cut off. Turns out the path we're using has a space in it. We'll need to make sure that this file's path is wrapped in quotes in order to avoid this problem. So we wrap it, and now let's save it, run it, and we can see the script we had open was run and the expected output can be seen. If you want to see more of the variables that you can use in your build system, you can read the documentation which I've linked to in the description below the video as usual. In the next video, We'll combine multiple build systems into a single file 
to organize them uh, into related builds and to simplify how we switch build systems since there is no simple keyboard shortcut to choose a different build system. Then we'll keep the list of build systems from getting super duper absurdly long.